welcome back to the vlog. Here we are in London. It's Triton time, so super high rollers. My plan is for the next few days is to play all these biggest tournaments. There's the 200,000 super high roller today, and then we have that 250,000 invitational followed by that. I feel like I'm well rested, did good preparation. Like basically all I needed was to get good rest. I've been sleeping well lately and, and uh, loading batteries for these kind of important days. Yeah, it's just basic things what you need. Sleep well, eat well, do some training, be in a good mindset. The rest is just uh, left on the poker tables. Now I'm gonna just like yeah. focus on this thing. Where's the right? Here. Table one. Okay. One cameraman, pick one for me. <laughs> Any. Okay. Table one, seat five. Let's go. <laughs> what a way to bust. That was a phenomenal table, yeah. Just busted on the 200,000 high roller in a way that I would you know, not want to bust in a big, massive flip. Uh, it's an interesting hand because I took a very unusual line on that hand. Um, normally when you have pocket queens and you face a raise, the natural thing is to 3-bet in this situation. But why I just called in this spot? Because I know that Linus has the button and he's very aggressive from there, so he likes to 3-bet more than any, any other player, I would say, on this situation. Three other players having stack sizes that they're pretty happy to solve. One Japanese guy and also, also that French guy who ended up Observing with these nine offsuits. I had a good good feel of what can happen on this hand of slow playing in this situation. And uh, once I called the raise pre flop and Linus 3 bet it to, to 37,000, the original raise was 10,000. I was never gonna fold my hands pre flop. It's, it's too strong of a hand regarding how many big blinds I had and so on. And I only had one decision after. Either I call 265,000 from Noel, he's all in, or I raise the rest of my chips, which I had about 550,000, something around there. So I decided to only to call the 265,000 because I wanted Linus to play in case he had something weaker. He's obviously never going to fold anything stronger. So I called and he shoved the rest. Once I put so much money in the pot, I, I, I can no longer fold fold my hand um, no matter what I have. And, and I was extremely happy to see Ace King off suit and Ace Nine off. Then then we just <laughs> the rest of us we we rely on the luck. And luck. So uh, this time I was not lucky to win this run out. And uh, there's nothing else you can do. So you know this is poker. Poker is a game of skill, but. Obviously, luck plays a big part of a lot of hands, so no regret there, and uh, on to the next one. Okay, we had a little mental break after busting on that big hand, and uh, ready to jump in again. So hopefully the second bullet will be a bit more luckier. Just a little bit more lucky. Let the cameraman pick. You pick. Good pick. Can I just go for that? C3, table 2, C3, table 2, in the room. Okay, good luck. Thank you. Okay. Today, 
one is done with this 200k um, second bullet. I got a better start. I mean, good start on the first bullet also, but I managed to increase my stack by 20% or 23% if you want to be precise. It's a good one because I had a table just full of pros, so always good when you get plus plus uh, plus tips on, uh, on tough tables. So it's going to be a redraw for tomorrow, so new day and a new, new adventure. I had a good start today and uh, day two on this 200k. Um, started with 246,000 today and I have, uh, I think around 750, which means I won quite a few hands and uh, I busted one player who had a starting stack with kings against ace-10. Pretty standard hand, I called again just uh, pre-flop and uh, big blind shot. That was a good one and uh, another one when I had ace-king offsuit against ace-jack. Uh, I raised in the big blind shot, shot with ace-jack. Uh, these are very standard hands, like nothing that the ace-10 did wrong there and then nothing that the ace-jack did wrong. And uh, once we have like 20 big blind stacks, uh, the money is going in with these kind of hands pretty easily. So. so yeah, I'm in a good position. I think I'm seventh in chips or somewhere around there. There's 31 players left, 13 gets paid. One interesting note from today is that we had 27 players left from yesterday and uh, you could still re-entry starting today and there was 19 re-entries done today. So we went quite a, uh, quite a, you know, almost double the, the player amount from 26 players to 46. The remaining field is, is a normal high roller field for, for Triton events. So, uh, Twenty players left, so we're seven from the money. The lines are quite high, so you know none of us have a, really a lot to play. But um, it was quite a roller coaster last two levels. So I went almost to one million in chips. What are you laughing? You said about that. You want you want me to Is interview he you? He's getting lucky. <laughs> you said about that. Ethan? You tell the viewers. That I'm getting lucky? No, I'm always lucky. I'm a lucky guy. How about you? Are you lucky? Yeah, this you, is saw, you saw me when like my heart was up a little bit. A First little of all, this is Sam Crafton, ladies and gentlemen. He is one of the best <laughs> tournament players and players, poker players in general in the world from UK. Always fun to play with. Very, yeah, we have a good time, right? Very chatty, like now. Yeah, me and that's, cool. that's important, you know, but I, I've seen a I've seen a clear correlation that whenever you're having good time and chatting, the chips are growing. Yeah, of you know? course. I think it's really important. We both of us appreciate that it's a social game, and of course, there's the time for seriousness when you're in the hand and, and you've got to mm. concentrate. But in between, you can be relaxed and have fun, and you're always like that as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think people, actually, until I played with you, sometimes your impression is like the clips. Obviously, we see these clips of you making these big plays, these big heroes, and you're super focused. But actually, you're, people probably don't realize you're one of the easiest people to play poker with. And like a lot no. of, not as, yeah. because I'm loud, people know that I'm talking, but you- Thank you very much for making oh, it uh, clearer. And uh, obviously, like when you're in a big hand, these moments that they show, Yeah. I don't talk when I'm in a big hand, when I'm in a zone of making calls or races. Yeah. But uh, while we play, we sure. always we always enjoy, which is yeah, the most exactly. important. You don't have to. When I know when I'm playing a hand with you, I'm aware of your presence. Or when you're acting after me, there's a and that tension can be good, and you have to hold that tension. But in between, you don't have to hold yeah. the tension on the 15 minute break or at the table when yeah, yeah. you're waiting for the bubble to burst or whatever. Yeah. Then you can just have a, a, little, a little little catch up and like a, it's easy yeah, go. This is very nice because I mean, you, we're sharing this to the audience and they, you know, people have all kind of, all kind of um, misconceptions. How would you, misconceptions about how poker has been played on the highest levels and so on that it's, you know, slow and we don't talk any, any anything and we're covering ourselves and, uh, you know, all the best players in the world, they don't do that. We are comfortable enough to, to sure, you know, sure. we don't have to. Yeah, I mean, if you keep, if you, if you were tense all day and like, I, you know, it's, you're not going to last through. It's like yeah, a marathon. You, you we will. have a 200k today, 250, then 100. You have yeah. to 
yeah. uh, like allow your body to be relaxed. Yeah, you will drain your energy. Tell me more about yourself. You had a lot of success in tournaments. You won Triton, the big one, invitational. Yeah, of course. A year ago. Yeah, that was amazing. Obviously, I mean, that was, of course, the biggest score that I've ever had. But uh, you know, I love I love to play Triton events. I got into poker quite late actually, so I didn't start playing cards till I was like. 28, 2008, seriously, 2009. But you were already a veteran, you know? Like, and, mm -hmm. and obviously not many, a lot of people getting very young at like 19, 18, 20 or whatever. Um, so I came to the game late, so I had a whole sort of life before poker. And then, you know, it took me a long time. I wasn't an overnight success. I kind of played all the, all the levels until now on the sort of big stage. But always tournaments, and I've always loved playing tournament poker. I can play a little bit of cash game. This has always been my realm, and yeah, I really enjoy it. I love the love the competitiveness. I love the high stakes. I'm seeing working for poker stars now, so I play the EPT circuit as well, and then fit these in as where I can the Tritons, and it's a great year now. How much do you have tournament winnings? I always ask this from yeah, all that's the. That's a good question. I don't players. know. I think it's like twelve or something like this. Fourteen. Right. Like the, right. the, basically the five point five was is like a huge chunk of the twelve yeah, yeah. thirties. I started playing like the super high stakes just before COVID came. Got a second in EPT Barcelona in the hundred k there uh, the year before COVID and, and played the Aussie Millions hundred k and World Series hundred k and, and sort of made final table. So yeah, yeah. yeah, we all have different things, but we think about poker, how we do things. Any advices for for players, sure. how they can improve their game, or or anything, anything? Yeah. Just uh, yeah, that's... I, I think one of the things to do is is to really stick to your game. One of the things that I see sometimes people who step up to play this stake, or people come from one case to five k's, or when I went from hundred pound tournaments to, to one case, is they suddenly think, oh, because I'm in this new arena, I have to do something different. Play the way that's brought you to this point. And if you have some difficulties, go back and assess afterwards. Don't overcompensate. I see players sometimes against you. Okay, it's Patrick Antonio, so I've got to do a fancy bluff or I've got a hero call in a way that I wouldn't yeah. normally. You don't, no. You're playing against Steve Chidwick and you, you've sort of bought in. You've earned the right to play that. Play your game. And the same, uh, you go and play your first EPT 5K. Don't start doing yeah. something really different. Play your game. And then of course, when you find limitations to your game by playing against these great players, good players, go back and have a little think and think, okay, I need to get a little bit better when I'm getting check raised and think about how I, I'm going to play or how I'm going to proceed. It's okay to learn, but don't don't make over adjustments just because yeah. I'm sure you've had it in your time. You've yeah, had yeah. donations because you're Patrick Antonis I'm, and people don't want to fall to you. I think this happens in every sport when there's big stars or most successful players. Once you respect them a lot, you give them a little advantage or upper hand and and uh, we all been there when we first play I, I, against the, our that. idols or big stars. And, yeah, of course. And confidence is a big thing. I got Patrick. Hope. Really nice chatting to you. Yeah, Let's yeah. do this again sometime. Here we are getting closer to the money. Um, 16 left, so it's a redraw. Two tables left. Uh, too bad that I. I don't have many chips, so relying on luck a lot. Uh, just had few hands I flopped, some medium pairs, bottom pairs, all these kind of hands that I lost some chips on those little by little, and I'm left with uh, basically a starting stack, 210K. Doesn't seem like I'm a favorite to uh, make the money right now, but it doesn't look as bad as it looks on the on the chip stacks. So like few things right now is pretty important for me that uh, once there's a redraw that I don't I don't get drawn straight to the big blind, which would eat 25k ante from my 210k uh, stack. So nice few free hands would be good. You know, this is tournament poker. You go up and down in chips. Sometimes you have little, sometimes you have a lot. There's one player who had 20k left today and he has 1.3 million right now. What we are waiting right now is actually that they're balancing the tables. All these three tables played equal hands, equal amount of hands. Then we uh, do the redraw for making it just two tables left with eight players. It's also good for me when it's eight-handed, when you have a short stack, so I have more hands to select to, uh, to shove my stack in and hopefully win a flip or, or something like that. We flip it back over to Patrick Antonius out of the big blind. He is jamming 185,000 cool. <clears throat> as an all in four bet from the big blind. Daniel DeForest opened the pot to 55K. David Yan from the button made it 140. 
The Patrick Jam has been flatted in two spots. It's an active side pot between the nines and the ace three of spades emerges on an all spade board. David Jan with the nuts. Has a hard one to win of ace three suited against two jacks and two nines and is pretty much a hammerlock to scoop this pot, 95% favorite. Now he'll draw dead as will Patrick. Did get another 75K so far for pairing. It's 50 on the flop, 75 on a turn, 155 on the river. But keep in mind, the flop had like 600 and some odd K in it. Oh, Devor is going to lay it down. Kevin. GG to Patrick. Yeah, I just busted. 15th or 16th, um, same time and uh, another player out. So yeah, pretty much bubble. Feeling very irritated, like always, when I bust like this, especially, you know, I had a 900K at some point, not too long time ago, and I lost a lot of small parts in a row, and eventually I cut it all in with jacks, three-way all in, which was quite a bit part, a big part, like 650K. Would have been a very nice stack. Big favorite to make the money, obviously, with that stack, and uh, I lost to Ace-3, Ace-3 of spades, so not gonna play anything today. Uh, uh, these tournaments are, you know, can be frustrating like this, obviously. And tomorrow we have a 250k Invitational, which is the main tournament in this in this event. So just gonna get rest for that one and hopefully do better there. Just about to start the 250k invitational. We have a record amount of entry fees. We have 47 businessmen, so 47 pros. It will be obviously the largest prize pool and uh, exciting three days of poker, hopefully. Uh, not much new about my table, it's all pro, so no need to go more deeper to that. Uh, it's kind of a day that you'll be always happy to just have uh, more chips than you start at the end of the day on a day like this. this uh, and to me, kind of uh, this tournament gets excited on the day too when we when we mix the full field. Uh, now it's just time to just close everything else out and just zoom into the poker. Last two levels were good. I managed to win two big pots in Porton hands. I have 460,000 around there now, so it's looking decent. I have increased my stack from the start of the day for 50%, a little bit more, so. Four more levels to play, and then we're gonna mix all the players for the last two levels today, so. So far going well, um, everything is working. I got my bluffs through and I got some value from my hands and uh, no regret on any, any hands so far. Another two levels played. Um, last two levels were not so good. I just lost the one big, big pot. The largest pot I played. You win some pots, you lose some pots. And uh, there's nothing else you can do than just keep focusing on the next one. So we'll see, we have four, four hours of play more today. Day one is done. Overall, it was a good day. I have uh, 400 434,000, started with 300,000. First eight levels, I feel like I played my absolute best. Don't think I would have done anything different if I can change. Got all the bluffs through and got good value for my hands. Then came a dinner break and we played two more levels and um, I'm pretty happy that we quit playing now because sometimes it's just weird that you're in such a zone for like eight hours of play and you have a dinner break, you come back and suddenly your focus is so-so. And this is uh, how I was feeling for the last two levels. Uh, last little bit chips, last last one flip and so on, but uh, tomorrow's the big day, important day. We'll play down to the money, down to the final table, and very happy how I played today and trying to repeat that tomorrow.
here we are, day two is about to start. The registration is closed by now, and yeah, I'm supposed to have half businessmen in my table, but my table is pretty tough right now. Um, I would prefer a kind of a stra strategy that's, you know, play more tighter, play smaller pots. Uh, there's gonna be a redraw after a few levels, I think. Very happy to be here, happy to play these type of tournaments. You know, these are really, really the most exciting ones that you kind of look for, forward to play. So hopefully gonna be a long one this tournament and I'm just right where, you know, I wanna be starting today, so. First two levels done for today. Uh, I'm pretty happy to be alive actually, still in the tournament. Uh, but a lot of key hands, I mean important hands happened. I lost another big one uh, with Kings, which was 420,000 pots. This kind of put me low in chips. I was back to like 200 and something in chips. There were some other hands uh, later. I got moved to another table. I managed to pull a very nice pot against uh, Chris Moneymaker. Um, I called with six dues of clubs from the big blind when he opened from the bottom. I flopped a flush draw, but it came ace-king four with two clubs. Check called his 30% flop bet, and the turn came a queen, no clubs. And the turn went check, check. And River came a very good card for me, king. King paired the board, so I didn't think he would have an ace in this case. So I decided to go for a little bit larger bluff on the River. Larger bet size, and uh, this time it worked out really well, actually. A moneymaker, he showed me an ace and folds, which is quite a crazy fold. So hopefully, uh, Hopefully keep, uh, keep having winning hands and uh, things would go smoothly from here. It's a, it's a long way to the money. Obviously, we're gonna play all day for that. And let's see how the next table is gonna look like. Here we are, made the money, so uh, very happy. It's always uh, the first step in the tournament is to make the money. So feeling relieved because uh, I was not in a great spot with my stack size. But anyways, there's no big, uh, big money jumps for a while. So now we can expect to lose players quite fast for the next, I would say, seven players. Then it's gonna be a kind of a battle to make the final table. So let's just go step by step, lose player one by one and hope Hope to not have, it, have any unlucky hands, no setups. I'm, a, I'm only in for one bullet. <laughs> Last time I was in for two bullets in this invitation or so. Feels good to make the money with one bullet, already profiting, so it's nice. It's gonna be a long day, hopefully. Sixteen left. We have another redraw. Um, I'm still in, but lost some chips on the last uh, last few levels. Just really card dead. I had few hands, just one small pot. I won with pocket fives when I flop a set also, but no action really. It was 30,000, 60,000 blinds, and now it's going to be 40, 80. And I have only one million, which is it's about 13 bigs, what I have, 12 and a half big blinds. So I'm running a little bit bad on these redraws. I just had a button and I would have had four free hands, which is kind of a big deal with this kind of stack size. Just to have a chance to four times to look at your hands if, I, if you have anything decent. Decently big. Also the last level when we had a redraw, I started on the big blind. So these things kind of matter sometimes on, on these these late stages of tournaments when don't have so many chips. So let's just say I get drawn on a big blind again. It's gonna eat almost 20% of my stack, 15% of my stack, so. But yeah, let's look at the positive sides. We made the money, we're in. It's a good situation, it's anyone's game. A lot of up and down going on in tournaments and uh, just, you know, keep positive mind and just go there and play your best. That's all we can do. Back in the days of the into third, 6.86 million. Going to the eventual champion is Kai Check V cut off. Patrick wow. Antonius jamming the tens and running into the Kings, just one seat over. So we see one of the tens 
And for Antonius folded in Chidwick's hand and cold deck in the early hours of the morning. Patrick with back-to-back caches in these Luxon Invitationals. Came third last time round. Gonna need the Case 10 on Turn or River if he's gonna go back-to-back -back in final tables. Now. One out. <laughs> one lone <laughs> out one for Antonis' tournament life here. No black 10. Who's Patrick? Game. For Patrick. Good game. Luck in the moon. Another yeah. deep run nice. okay. in the Great. highest buying tournament Great. of the series. Kevin. Finished 15th, almost double the money, 450k. Wanted to go deeper, but really had no cards for the last two hours. It was pretty painful to watch for people who were watching and uh, painful to play. Basically folded, since I had 1.6 million, I had to fold every hand literally down to 1 million. And then we got a redraw at, at 16 left. I had a button at the time, four free hands. Got drawn straight to another big blind, 180k up from my stacks. I got left with nine and a half big blinds. And then just came a hand where Talal raced and I had pocket tens. I shoved it, which is an auto shove for anyone. And, and one player behind me woke up with kings. So, and my tens couldn't beat kings this time. And here we are. So it doesn't feel good to go out after especially playing long couple of days. But, you know, still profited 200k and covered some other tournaments. But overall, another Another Invitational Triton tournament uh, turned out to be a very nice one, good experience, got to play a lot. And uh, next one, I think, is a uh, main event for me. Just gonna start focusing on that one. Uh, I think it starts tomorrow, so important to get another good night's sleep and come with a fresh mind. Thank you for joining me for this journey and see you on next episode. <laughs>